Imagine a strawberry, so freakishly delicious, so perfect that people are willing to pay $50 for a small box. Sounds crazy, right? Well, that's exactly what Oishi Omakase has achieved and they're making millions of dollars doing it. So, how did a startup manage to turn a humble fruit into a luxury product that not only sells like crazy, but also gets featured on the biggest talk shows in the US? And what kind of a role does vertical farming play in all of this success? Stay tuned because we're about to reveal the secrets behind Oishi Omakase's $50 strawberries and their revolutionary approach to farming. Alright, so let's talk about what makes Oishi Omakase's farming method so groundbreaking. Well, the growing method that they use isn't just your traditional farm out in the fields. Instead, they grow high quality Japanese strawberries without the sun and soil by stacking crops in multiple layers on top of each other inside a controlled indoor environment. This type of growing is called indoor vertical farming and it's a technology that has grown rapidly in the past 10 years. But Oliver Sun, you ask, how can you grow plants without sun and soil? Well, in short, indoor vertical farming uses something called hydroponics, which is a water-based farming method where plants are grown using nothing but a nutrient-rich water mixture that is pushed directly into the plant root zones. This allows for precise control over the nutrients each plant receives, resulting in optimal growth and yield with a superior quality. While normally plants would get their nutrients from the soil that they're growing in, replacing the soil with the nutrient-rich water means that we have less variability in the growth. Fun fact, the only reason why plants actually need soil or any kind of growing media for that matter is basically for root support. Soil is actually a source for many diseases and pests for plants, so by removing the soil we can grow a better and healthier product that is safer for human consumption. Anyways, so I mentioned that Oishi is growing the strawberries also without the sun. How is this even possible? This is Alexi. Well, that's where specially manufactured LED lighting comes into play. However, these aren't just any kind of lights. They're specifically designed to provide the exact spectrum of light that plants need for photosynthesis. By mimicking natural sunlight, these LEDs ensure that the plants grow healthy and strong, regardless of the weather outside, and importantly for strawberries, that they flower and grow fruit at the right time. In fact, by combining the optimal growing conditions of hydroponics with the right type of LED lights, Oishi can get more harvest out of their strawberry plants than outdoor growers could ever imagine. Vertical farming also makes incredible use of space. So instead of spreading crops over acres of land, Oishi basically stacks their strawberries in layers using 3D space to their advantage. This method can produce significantly more produce per square unit of land used compared to conventional field farming. In fact, some vertical farming companies are claiming, at least, yields up to 20 or 30x for the same footprint as conventional farming. But the advantages, of course, don't stop there. Indoor vertical farming is all about resource optimization. Using hydroponics specifically, these types of systems can use just a few percentages of the water that traditional farms would use. This is because the water in these systems is, generally speaking, recycled, and many facilities are actually recapturing moisture from the air evaporated by the plants. Plus, with a controlled environment, there's no need for harmful pesticides. This basically means healthier plants and a cleaner environment. So, why does all of this matter for Oishi? Because it allows them to grow their strawberries in the perfect conditions year-round, ensuring consistent quality and taste. Basically, every single strawberry is a result of meticulous care achieved by advanced technologies, allowing them to command such a hefty price tag. So this innovative approach not only maximizes efficiency, but also ensures that every strawberry that reaches the store is as fresh and delicious as possible. While other vertical farms have been failing around the world, Oishi has not only found their unique spot in the market, they are also setting a new standard for how indoor vertical vertical farms can become profitable. So have you ever dreamt of growing fresh, delicious, quality exotic herbs without any kind of effort for your business or inside your own kitchen? Well, that is now possible thanks to Herbie, your friendly indoor gardening buddy. 
With Herbie, you can grow almost anything anywhere. Want to grow Nordic berries in the middle of the Caribbean Sea in your yacht? Or exotic edible flowers in the middle of the Arctic? No problem. Herbie will grow fresh herbs, leafy greens, and a range of edible flowers automatically without you having to learn anything about technology or plant biology. Herbie is ideal for fine dining establishments and boutique hotels with demanding customers and a busy staff. So Herbie will officially launch later in 2024, so make sure to join our waiting list today and secure your spot in the queue to get your own Herbie indoor farming appliance. So what makes a strawberry worth $5 a piece? Well, at first glance, it might sound completely outrageous, but Oishi has pretty much cracked the code to create the ultimate berry experience, I guess. So let's dive into what makes these strawberries so special. So imagine biting into a strawberry that's consistently sweet, juicy, and perfectly ripe every single time. That's basically the Oishi promise. Each strawberry in their factory is grown with precision and care, ensuring it meets the highest standards for Japanese berries. So instead of half of the berries being raw and even moldy, as you know is normal for supermarket produce, you can be sure that each of the Oishi berries come to you just perfect. Plus, their farming practices are also embracing consumer-friendly values like non-GMO processes that use less water and zero pesticides. What's important is that it seems that all of this is not just hype. Not only are customers hyping the Oishi strawberries, but they have also been featured on some of the largest talk shows in the US, a place that usually features Hollywood stars, not berries. According to what we've heard, people describe the Oishi Omakase strawberries as the, uh, you know, best strawberries that they've ever tasted. So basically, this premium quality has created a strong market demand and a strong brand, especially among food enthusiasts and high-end restaurants looking for top-notch ingredients. By investing in state-of-the-art technology and sustainable practices, Oishi ensures that their strawberries are not only delicious, but also more ethically produced. This resonates with a lot of consumers who are willing to pay a premium price for high-quality food products. Anyways, the Oishi strawberries are more than just a $5 fruit. They're basically a luxury experience, a commitment to more sustainable farming practices and a testament to what next-gen indoor farming can achieve when done correctly. So next time you see one of these berries, you'll know exactly why it's worth the price. All right, so talking about sustainability, let's dig a bit deeper. So this is actually the difficult part of any indoor vertical farming operation, and the industry has recently been full of greenwashing with absolutely outrageous claims about indoor farming saving the world and such. So let's see what Oishi says about their strawberry farming. So first, it is clear that in today's world, it's not enough to produce great food or amazing strawberries. How we grow them matters just as much. So I would argue that while Oishi is not definitely perfect in this, they are doing a lot of things right when it comes to their sustainability efforts. One of the biggest advantages of indoor vertical farming is its incredible efficiency with water. So traditional farming methods often waste a lot of water, but Oishi uses a combination of hydroponics with an advanced circular filtration system that is able to recycle the majority of the water they use in their farms. This can mean significant water savings, but it should be noted that Oishi, like many other indoor vertical farming startups do not publicly share their water usage numbers, which is really unfortunate because how can the public trust what the firms in this industry claim if they do not share their data openly? Anyways, what Oishi is definitely doing right is removing pesticides from the farming process. In the controlled environment of a vertical farm, there's no need for harmful chemicals. This means that Oishi's strawberries are not only tastier, but also safer than some of the other conventionally produced strawberries that do use a lot of pesticides. In addition, Oishi is all about the non-GMO production and they are also non-GMO project verified. Okay, so water and pesticides aside, the biggest problem facing indoor vertical farms, both in terms of financial and environmental sustainability, is still the incredibly high energy consumption caused in large parts by the artificial lighting and the environmental controls used inside these facilities. Again, Oishi does not share their energy consumption numbers openly, so 
can really comment on that, I guess. Having said this, a huge issue for indoor farms has not only been the overall energy consumption, but also the source of that energy. Only a very small portion of indoor vertical farms have traditionally used their own renewable energy sources like solar. Oishi, on the other hand, built their newest New Jersey facility adjacent to a large solar field, allowing the farm to use solar as a source for energy. How large of a portion of the farm's energy comes from the solar field? No idea. This again is not shared publicly, but at least it's there next to them. I guess. Anyways, sustainability in indoor farming doesn't and shouldn't stop at the farm. What Oishi has done correctly is that it has constructed its farms inside old industrial facilities in close proximity to major metropolitan areas, for example, New York City. Having their production facilities built into major urban locations means that their strawberries travel a shorter distance to reach consumers. This cuts down on transportation emissions, leading to potential savings in carbon footprint in long distance distance haulage. Although we still have to account for last mile delivery, which has a huge impact on the overall environmental footprint. So regardless of their potential shortcomings, by committing to ever improving sustainability practices, Oishi is not just producing premium strawberries, they are, in my opinion, also working on new environmental standards for indoor farming one step at a time. All right, so now let's talk dollars and cents. How has Oishi transformed a simple strawberry into a multi-million dollar business? Well, Oishi has basically found a way to tap into a premium niche market where quality trumps everything. Not only does this show that indoor vertical farming does have potential to become profitable if a right combination of technology and high value products are used. It also shows that consumers are willing to pay a premium for an exceptional taste, at least in certain markets. So Oishi's success hasn't just been financial. They have also started uh, disrupting the traditional farming and produce markets by proving that indoor vertical farming can produce superior quality fruits efficiently, they are on their way to challenge the status quo while inspiring other producers to rethink their methods. Naturally, Oishi isn't stopping here. They have ambitious plans for the future, including expanding their operations and uh, scaling their production capabilities with new automated technologies. This means more strawberries, more innovation, and hopefully a bigger impact on the overall indoor farming market. But not all vertical farming companies are doing great like Oishi. In fact, most of them have failed quite miserably. Click here to learn why.